Hi, I'm Norm Stockton, and I'm here today with the Galleon Kruger 1001 RB. And more specifically, this is my own personal 1001 RB. If you notice any nicks or dings, it's because this has been my main road amplifier for about seven years now. And I still love it as much as the day I got it. This is the benchmark model in GK's acclaimed RB series of analog bass amplifiers. And they have extremely high current capacity, which results in punch and responsiveness uh, that's unparalleled, really. Great tone shaping, and it has GK's horn biamp system. I'm a huge fan. Uh, this is a two rack space unit, 700 watts into four ohms, and there's an additional 50 watts allocated just to the horn. Again, the biamp thing, we'll talk about that in a second. Designed and built in the US. Let me walk us through the front and rear panels real quick, and then we'll go control by control. And I always wanna encourage people to um, plug in your headphones or your speakers so you can kinda really hear what's happening, especially with the low end, okay? Computer speakers don't generally do that very well. All right, so starting on the left side of the front panel, you've got your DI, you've got your ground lift and a pre and post EQ uh, selector, as well as an independent level control for what you're sending out the DI, very helpful stuff. Input jack, uh, 14 dB pad, input attenuator. You have a tuning mute, your volume knob, and then your voicing filters. You've got your four and five string bass selector. Um, you've got your contour and your presence, and these really can do some tone shaping. We'll talk about that in a second. You have GK's extremely slamming active four band EQ. You have your boost control, which gives some of that trademark GK grind, as well as your biamp control, so you can independently control the level of your tweeter and your woofer. Um, then you have your patch bay, so effects send and return, as well as a tuning jack. Um, you have your power protect LED, which we'll talk about in a second, very helpful stuff, as well as your power button. On the rear panel, you have your quarter inch outputs, as well as your speak on outputs. And those speak ons are the ones that you'll use with the biamp setup, we'll talk about that. So anyway, starting here with the DI. A lot of amps have built-in DIs that don't sound very good. And that's the reason that almost every time you get to a gig and you uh, want to plug into your head, a lot of sound people are like, oh, yeah, I just use my DI, you know, because they don't sound good. But the GK ones sound great. They're quiet, and I use them all the time, and engineers love them. Um, as you can tell, I'm using it for recording this demo. And then you have your ground lift, as well as a pre and post EQ, and that's always a helpful feature if you're doing anything extreme with your EQ to, to make it sound right for the acoustics of the room where you're standing, maybe you're standing right in front of your amp or whatever, um, it allows you to send a flat signal to the front of house. Very cool stuff. And then in addition, this level control allows you to independently control the level that you're sending out the DI. So if the front of house is needing more bass or less bass, I'm sure it's more bass, then uh, you can turn it up here. Uh, input jack, always helpful. I, I really dig these. And then you've got your input attenuator, which is a 14 dB pad. If you have a bass uh, active electronics or you're doing anything particularly bombastic, then um, this yellow clip LED may light up. And in that case, you push the 14 dB attenuator and that makes sure that you're not clipping at the input stages. Very, very helpful stuff. You have your tuning mute, which again, that big bright LED <laughs> lets you know. So there's no doubt um, that works in conjunction with the tuner input. So you can always leave a tuner plugged in there. And when you do this, then it stops sending the signal to the front of house. So really, really helpful for tuning between songs. Your uh, volume knob, which adjusts your preamp gain, obviously. And then you have your voicing filters. And one of the things that's really cool, you know, the GK rigs are super versatile and let you get such a broad range of sounds. And it makes it where this rig isn't just something that you can use for rock or funk or R&B or whatever, you know, you, it really covers a broad range. Um, in the case of this four and five string selector, that affects down around 20 Hertz. So when you're in five string mode, here how it kind of brings in some of the subs. Um, I always play five string, almost always, mm -hmm. but uh, I generally like it in four string mode. And again, it's just personal preference and what the music dictates. The contour is a bit of a smiley face EQ. So uh, it at 500 Hertz starts dipping and then bumping the lows and the highs. It's off right now, but when you start bringing it clockwise, So, kind of scooped, right? So I'm gonna leave this off just so we can keep it flat and you can really get an idea of what this sounds like. The presence is a, up around 10K, so. Really kind of brings some sparkle, right? Especially if you're using a pick. You can really hear it there. So I'm gonna leave mine off there as well. 
Um, you have GK's awesome four band active EQ. It comes all the way from the 800 RB and still absolutely kills um, in terms of the highs. Really gets crispy. I'm gonna leave it flat. A lot of times when I'm doing my fusion stuff, um, I'll have the high mid set to about nine o'clock, but you can get some nice bark, you know. Right? I'm gonna leave it kind of flat. Or actually, it was about nine o'clock, so I'll leave it there. Low mids, bring in the girth. Or you can really thin it out. And then your lows, again, I'm always careful because I don't want to uh, distort the recording. Or you can really thin it out. Then you have your boost, which is GK's signature growl. And um, I love what this does. It's very, very musical. It's a it's very subtle distortion, but it's very musical and absolutely applicable. Now this is gonna bring down the level a little bit, but even so, tonally, it's more polite. Right? I tend to leave it about 12 o'clock. Now in conjunction with the bi-amp capability of this amp, you can adjust the level of the horn versus the level of the woofer. And generally speaking, that sort of growly sound tends to sound better coming through the woofer over the tweeter. GK automatically takes care of that because only stuff at 5K or higher goes to the tweeter or the horn. And in addition, you've got these high cuts on both the tweeter and the woofer. So with the tweeter, it's at 10K, so it kind of gets rid of any sort of hiss or anything that you might have going. And then in addition, um, you can get rid of anything at 5K or above in terms of the woofer. So you can really sculpt the sound that you want with this biamp setup. And it's got just tons of headroom. I really, really love how this amp sounds. In addition, you have your patch bay with your effects send and return if you have outboard effects. And then you have your tuning jack, which you can leave your tuner plugged in there always, like I said, and it works in conjunction with the tuning mute. With the Power Protect LED, when you first turn the amp on for about five seconds while it's warming up, it's on uh, red and then it turns blue. Blue means it's good to go. Um, but if the amp is ever overheating, and by the way, there's a great fan in here that keeps this thing running cool most of the time, but if you're ever uh, overheating or the electricity in the place is weird, then that'll turn red and that'll let you know something's up. All right, then you have your power button. And on the rear panel, you've got your quarter speaker outputs as well as your speak on outputs. And those are for GK's special speak on cables. They're proprietary because they're wired differently than your PA speak on cables to allow for the uh, bi-amp setup. But man, punch, tone, headroom for days. I am a huge fan of these amps and the bi-amp capability, by the way, is one of the things I love most about them. But uh, super reliable and I have not found an amp I prefer to the 1001 RB from Galley and Kruger. I encourage you not to just take my word for it, but to go check it out on your own as well. And you can also get more information at galleon.com. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Norm Stockton. God bless you. And I hope to see you on the road.